With millions of local migrant workers in Metro Manila, where can one find a place to stay that's low cost yet functional? I spoke to an entrepreneur who might have found the solution by turning container vans into dormitories. This is a 40 foot container. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, what we did was uh, we divide them into uh, bunk beds. Like these are like uh, capsule beds in Japan. So said each one, each container fits 22 uh, tenants. That's correct, 22 beds. So each one gets a bed. And uh, if you notice, we also have uh, foot lockers for storage. And here we have uh, lockers also. As you notice, it's not a lot of space, uh, storage space. But like then again, uh, like I mentioned, this is. A, uh, it's not meant to be a permanent housing or a home. It's a transitory space. And how long would it, did it take you guys to set up the... I, I mean, I guess the, the, the time it took to construct these particular these, uh, uh, dormitories. That's the entire site already. Uh, we're looking at 20 container structures. You're at full capacity right now? We're at full right capacity now? right now. Uh, the demand is very high for uh, low-cost uh, or low-income housing. I see right now, if you notice, uh, there are a lot of uh, developments in Metro Manila, residential developments, but these are mostly catering to the upper market, the condos and this and that. But if you notice, there's none catering to the CD market, the minimum wage earners. Right now, we are here, mm -hmm. and uh, these are jeepneys, jeepney routes. Uh -huh. So if you can see, we have four jeepney routes that uh, traverses our site. So people working around this area are our potential tenants here. So that's what we're looking for when we're parting with uh, an, uh, idle lot, lot owners. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to be the property in the middle of the city, uh, as long as uh, what we need is uh, access to public transportation. So that will make it viable already. We are already in talks with property owners in Makati, uh, Santa Mesa in Makati, very near the Circuit City development. Uh, we are in talks with uh, the FAB uh, in Bataan uh, to put up uh, uh, FAB is the free port of Bataan uh, to put up uh, housing uh, for the workers there and also we have some interested parties uh, for Davao. We have a lot of different uh, investment options. Uh, well, the simplest one would be uh, a JV or a partnership with the property owner. They come in with their property, they put in the investment, we come in as uh, the contractors, we build the facility and then we manage it for them. Now for this partnership we're looking at about a 15 million uh, investment for a 1,000 square meter development that can house already about 20 containers. And that's 100% coming from the JV partner? The, the JV, the landowner, yes. And uh, we'll then have a profit share. Uh, so 90% of revenues would go to the property owner. Since he's also the investor, then uh, we take in 10% as a management fee. Given how relatively simple it seems to set this up, you know, it's something that uh, perhaps home landowners can go into themselves also. Is this something that the City Hub is concerned with regards to competition? Or is this something that City Hub even, even considers a threat to, uh, to the business model? It's easy to replicate what we have done structurally. I think the secret of City Hub is more on management. How do we manage 260 people with just a minimal staff? And uh, how, how do we keep the peace and order considering we're handling 250 male uh, workers, uh, factory workers. Uh, these are factory workers, security guards, janitors, you know. And, uh, you know, Metro Manila, we are 15 million population. And the, the study shows that 3 million out of that are what they call local migrant workers. So these are people working in the city, but live in the outskirts because of high property costs. Now, this, are, this is the target market that we're addressing. 